Hey guys, this is Celia with Paper Beats Rock Designs and I am back with another layout. Here's a picture of my fiance and her son in a little side by side a couple years ago. And I have this scrap piece of paper from, I believe the paper studio, it's a paper pack I got, I think oof, probably back in like 2010, 2011. Um, but I am going to do a little bit of mixed media on the back. I don't plan on doing a whole lot, so I didn't put down any gesso or anything like that. And these are just watercolors from Daiso that I have kind of mixed together to make my own colors. Um, and I try to put a lot of pigment down first and do a little bit of splattering. And then I'm going to come through in a little bit with, um, some saran wrap that I spray water onto and then add that directly onto the paint on top and that kind of keeps my work or my paper from getting a little you know not as warped it still gets a little warped but it doesn't bother me too much but you can really play with the color this way so I'm just rolling up a little bit of it because I didn't want it to be too wet and right now I feel like it looks like a hot mess. It looks like just bad. Did not like it. So I let it dry, came back a few minutes later, um, put another layer on, mixed some, um, like a Kelly green with black and brown to get that dark evergreen and then a uh, lime green with um, that first mixture to get that like olive drab green. And again, just spreading the color around, getting it in the, mostly the places I really want it. And then I come back again with the saran wrap and water. Um, I have noticed that if you let the watercolor dry a little bit more and then come back, you get some interesting textures and some interesting um, layers of color. But I was really impatient. I wanted to get this page done. And to be honest with you, it didn't take me that long. Um, not including drying time. I think I was only in there scrapping and working with stuff for maybe about 20, 25 minutes. It was not too bad. I'm going to dry it and the great thing about using the saran wrap too is that once you have some of that paint on there or inks on there, once you start splatting it around and pushing the color around, it almost makes splatters without having to use the paintbrush. But I did come back and let that dry and I came back with um, an even darker green and splatter that around. Now I am using some Ivy ink by Ranger that I'm pretty sure I just picked up at Tuesday morning and a whole bunch of roller stamps. I didn't make you sit through all of these because I used quite a few, I believe. Let's see, I used two from Amy Tan, one from Dear Lizzie, one from Chamel and another one just from Joann's that I've had for a while. So again, I let that dry. Um, I'm coming back with that piece of paper from the paper studio and I'm distressing the edges just with my fingernails. Um, I know some people want like to use like distress tools or scissors. I feel like when I do it with scissors, it's too too perfect of a distress if that makes any sense like it's I don't know there's no like gradient to it so when I use my fingernails I mess up more which in my head is good and it gets a different kind of edge on there the whole way down just gluing that down I just use um, regular tacky glue from like Walmart I would think I grabbed that from it's nice and cheap and it works really well to stick down almost almost anything So I have these frames that I have gotten from uh, probably Tuesday morning too. They're simple stories so rad. So I'm putting that in there and cutting off the edge that kind of poking out. <clears throat> And now I have backed the whole frame and picture with some fun foam that I just got from the dollar store. And 
another frame from Simple Stories. That first one had a little bit of blue on it and um, the paper didn't have any blue and I you know, didn't use any blue for the watercolor in the background. So I wanted to grab some things that kind of had more blue in it so I would pop those on a little bit later. Right now, this is, it's like gauze. I honestly found it, <laughs> I found it in my, my husband's garage in the shop while they were doing stuff. Um, it almost looks like, I don't know, like a piece of a cast or something, but it had an interesting texture. So I cut a little piece off and put that underneath the picture. I saved some so I could use it in another spot. And now I added, um, I believe it's paper from when you like roll coins. I have a bunch of those. I ripped off a piece and tucked it under as well as a ticket that I cut off probably from a piece of paper from a cut apart and this is another cut apart that came from the wildflower um, paper pad by American Crafts that I picked up again at Tuesday morning I am one of their biggest customers I love Tuesday morning putting on a you and me sticker that has been floating around my craft room and just dying to be used for so long. It wasn't even like stuck to the paper, it was just, I'm pretty sure on my desk or like, I don't know, stuck to something. I had to use glue to put that down. I'm putting another piece of that um, coin wrapper paper down because it had an awkward edge to it and I wanted it to cover up that um, wander to wonder, or wonder to wander cut apart down there. So adding that guy in. Uh, this is where I'm trying to add some more blue in there. So I tried some labels from Citrus Twist, those didn't work, so I went with um, a cut apart from the Gather collection, but um, just the 6x6 pad. So I put that butterfly back on and now I am messing around with some um, not twine thread putting a little bit behind the right hand side of the picture and some brown thread on uh, the left hand side next to that uh, butterfly sorry for the focus and the shift of camera I didn't realize I had move the little bar that holds my, my phone up for me. Still getting used to filming myself while scrapbooking. But, um, using another scrap of that coin paper off to the, <clears throat> off to the left. Another piece of that gauze as well. Just putting that underneath. Uh, that is just like a ticket that I got in some happy mail and another cut apart from that wildflower paper pad that says, I think it says born to be wild and free. And I'm just cutting off the edge. I liked how everything was looking off to that, to the right, but I felt like the left was just so, so lonely. I needed something. Putting that tire on. That's just a die cut that again I got some in some happy mail. I wish I had so many more. There's not a whole lot of masculine products out there, and as I've said before, I live with five guys. It's my fiance and our son. We have my father living with us and two roommates as well. So I'm very outnumbered. I pulled those little circles off to the side off because I didn't really like like it. I was trying to add some blue like I was saying earlier and it wasn't really working but I did get that compass to work off underneath that uh, I think it's a unicorn paper. And now I'm just adding a couple buttons. I feel like I have way too many buttons in my stash so I added one underneath. I did add a teeny tiny one next to the butterfly. I guess I forgot to film that one. And then one to the right up there. 
And that is it. So here is a close-up of all the stuff around my picture. That little unicorn guy and the butterfly and that teeny tiny button that I got from Walmart. That interesting gauze. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching and have an amazing day. Bye guys.